Did you just get the red Komodo 6K? Or are you strongly considering buying one? And are you new to the red cinema world? Well, we have a video that is just for you. Well, in all seriousness, I was in your shoes just two months ago. So let's talk about these seven things that you want to know as a proud new red owner. Because this camera is quite different than a DSLR or mirrorless camera or other cinema cameras. But first, a little footage sequence of what I shot with this little beast here in the past two months. And see you in a minute. I'm so stoked about this video in particular because I wish a resource like this existed about two months ago when I embarked on this rad journey. For those of you new to the channel, first of all, hi. Secondly, I received the Red Komodo Stormtrooper in late July and promised you all to come along on this journey with the red camera and oh boy, you've came along. I cannot tell you enough how much I appreciate your continued engagement and positive vibes around my videos. In this world, in this year particularly, this is a beacon of joy and positivity for me, so thank you so much. There's already one hour of review and testing content on my channel, you can check it out up here. But with this video, we are officially graduating from reviews to tutorials, yay! Most of what I learned about the RED ecosystem and how to shoot with this camera, I learned from articles on RED.com, link in the description below. As well as engaging with the RED community, I totally recommend joining RED.user.net as well as the RED Komodo user group if you haven't done so already. And thirdly, also by just trying out and breaking things, still the best way to learn. Now summarizing my learnings and experiences, we will talk about seven things that you want to know as you are joining this RED universe. We will touch on accessories, how to get this camera ready to shoot, sounds more straightforward than it actually is, codex and compressions, how to properly expose, file management, how to edit with these files and rounding it up by a little bit of a color grading high level overview of the IPP2 image processing pipeline. I will leave the chapters down in the play bar below but you probably want to stick along for the full ride because we will have some fun so let's go! All right, first things first, and this should be a quick one because you probably have already done a lot of research and know that you need certain accessories to get red cameras running. And the Komodo itself comes as this brick. The first thing you want to pick up in this case is an RF to EF mount adapter. If you have a lot of EF glass, I have actually the one with a drop-in filter, super handy. Then you want to add some batteries. In the case of the Komodo, these are BP. 955s that I'm using. Then you add some media. This is the CFast card. I'm using the Angel Bird ones, but luckily with the Komodo batteries and media actually comes way cheaper than most other RED cameras where you have to either use RED's proprietary RED mags that are way more expensive or bigger batteries. You want to add a monitor or a phone or an iPad as an alternative or you use the screen, but generally speaking, you definitely want to have a monitor 
certainly with the other red cameras you need one in this case of a Komodo it's already a little screen built in which is super nice but you don't want to necessarily 100% rely on it and last but not least you want to add something to properly hold the camera it's not like a DSLR that is like a built-in grip the DSMC2 cameras and the Komodo they're basically just blocks of metal I picked up the outrigger handle for the Komodo which is super super handy because it also has a, a record button so once you have all this together you're ready to shoot many people build these cameras out even more so that's what the benefit is of be it being a modular system so need to know number two after you get all your stuff together and have a camera ready to shoot is getting this camera started and running it it sounds easier than it actually and faster than it actually is compared to mirrorless cameras or other camera systems let's take a little while so let's talk about the boot up time let's turn it on here and get the timer started but you will see that it takes a little while compared to what you may be used to from a, a, another camera system. And the boot up time itself may change with future firmware updates depending on how much more they cram in or how much more efficient they make it. Um, but what you need to know is that it takes a little while, so factor that in. Luckily, this camera is built for reliability. There is no recording limit as you know, like other cameras may have, so you can keep it running as long as you want, which also comes in handy that you can have hot swappable batteries. So you see like if I'm just removing this battery here, it switches over to the other one and I can put a new battery on while the camera is still running. So before you get started though, you wanna make sure that the camera is up to temperature and properly black shaded. So you may ask yourself, what on earth is black shading? And that was something new to me as well and something I had to get used to, but it's important to do and to make sure. So black shading is the calibration process where the camera measures the pattern of the fixed noise, stores that in its memory and then subtracts it from concurrent frames and only leaves random noise behind. Optimal black shading results will be achieved when you do the calibration under the same conditions and camera settings that you'll be using for your shoot. So let me show you an example where I black shaded early in the day and shot all day and then um, you know, like it was one of my first shooting days with this camera and I didn't know what I was doing. And later on the temperatures dropped and you see in the left bottom corner of the image a little like darker blob of, of like darker pixels. So you may ask yourself, when on earth do I have to do this black shading? Well, first of all, after an extreme change in temperature from the current calibration map. And we're talking about 15 degrees Celsius plus minus 30 degrees Fahrenheit. Secondly, if you change your exposure time in more than half a second increments, which is only relevant when you do long exposure times like time lapses, or if you go down to high frame rates. And third, when either the T or the E indicator here is not green, that means that your calibration is not properly mapped to the temperature the camera is running at. You see here, mine is totally fine at 34 degrees Celsius. Fourth, when you see noise patterns or lines on your image. And last but not least, also after every firmware upgrade. And I quickly show you how you do it. In the case of the Komodo, you just go down here to maintenance and click calibration and you very important you have to you have to put your uh, lens hood on and I also dial in the ND as much as possible because you want to have the sensor really blacked out then you just click OK and the calibration starts again it takes also a little bit of time so factor that in as you get started in a new shooting environment and when you get shooting so let's go outside and let's check out the sunrise calibration successful very nice. All right, let's talk about codecs and compressions. It sounds more intimidating than it actually is. Basically, you have the choice between two major codecs. One is ProRes and the other one is R3D's, RED's RAW files. On the DSMC2 cameras, you can actually simultaneously shoot both ProRes and R3D's. On the Komodo, you will have to pick one or the other. Unless you're shooting a long form video, like an interview, 
you always want to pick R3Ds. While ProRes files are smaller, R3Ds, the Red RAW gives you all the flexibility and is the reason why you got this camera. With these 16-bit RAW files, you can adjust the ISO and white balance in post with no image quality loss. You have this beautiful color depth and dynamic range of 16 stops. So there's really no reason, unless you are shooting something long, to not choose R3Ds. Within the RAW files, you have the choice between between different compression ratios. Compressions basically make your RAW files smaller while retaining resolution, colors, dynamic range and more to the best of its ability. The red coat compression is really where the magic happens and the significant technology that red brought to the market. On the DSMC2 cameras, it's expressed in a range of compression ratios from two to one to 22 to one. On the Komodo, it's much more simplified. You have the choice between LQ, MQ and HQ. For VFX work and scenes with a lot of detail, like when you're shooting in a forest, you wanna pick HQ. Otherwise for cinema, TV, online, when you shoot documentaries or television, you're totally fine picking MQ, I shoot actually most of the time also LQ. Many people in the RED community told me that RADs absolutely love light and that you want to give it as much light as possible. So let's talk about how to properly expose with this sensor. So I will share with you my approach. This is by no means the best way. It is certainly depending on circumstances and there are alternative ways. And also please let me know down in the comments below what you found working best. So let's start off with talking about a tool that is unique to RED cameras and extremely powerful in the exposure in the raw workflow. And it's not the histogram, it's not false color. It is the RGB exposure, the traffic lights. So these traffic lights indicate whether a certain color color channel is clipping in the highlights or crushed in the blacks. And the important thing to know for you is that this is being done on the raw image data, regardless of the LUT or the ISO you apply. So let me show you. If I change now the ISO to a higher level, you see on this side, you see the, the histogram as well as the traffic lights. So if I'm now changing the ISO and bump it up to 3200, you see the the histogram jumping to the right, but the but the although it looks overexposed, the traffic lights still show you there's nothing overexposed. Or on the other end, if we go down on the on the ISO here, you would likely the windows here would uh, parts of it would be likely crushed. Um, but again, it, it it tells you basically that you are still good to go and well exposed. So in general, but depending on the scenario, I would try to give the sensor as much light as possible and obviously still use the histogram and false color to hit the right exposure. So now that you have the exposure tools, let's talk about the levers that you can pull to control your exposure. And this is like very basic camera one on one, but obviously you have the exposure time or the shutter angle. You have the ISO, you have the iris, and you have also the use of ND filters. So for exposure time, you generally want to follow the 180 degree shutter angle rule to get a natural motion blur. The easy thing here on cinema cameras is that you can just like dial it in. The iris I use as a creative tool to achieve the depth of feel I'm envisioning. Right now I'm shooting wide open at a 1.8 to give like a little bit of a blurred background. You see um, Hancock Tower right there. And um, that's, that's easy and straightforward, which brings us right to ISO. So when it comes to ISO on RETs, you have to know two things. First of all, RETs don't have a base ISO. So unlike many other cameras where you want to hit the base ISO in order to get the widest dynamic range, on RETs you don't need to worry about it that much. Secondly, ISO is raw metadata. So meaning that you can adjust the ISO in post without any loss in image quality. So this leaves me basically with ND filters and I'm using oftentimes a variable ND filter to dial in the right exposure and make sure that no highlights are clipped and no blacks are crushed and then off you go and shoot and once you're sh done shooting you know you go to post and import all your files and uh, grade them and that's where I see you next in the editing booth see you in a second All right, we are back inside and ready to import our beautiful files to our hard drives. And what you need to know is that every time you hit record, every time you create a film a clip, it actually creates a folder that is called an RDC folder, Red Digital Clip Folder. And within these clip folders are your raw files. And so let's look into one and check out what, so what's in there. 
What you see is actually that you have multiple increments of R3D files and that's because Red is using the FAT32 file system and therefore all your clips are basically broken out in 2.15 gigabyte chunks. Eventually your editing systems and NLEs and, and grading systems will read it as one clip but just know that don't freak out it's, it's broken out in, in multiple clips. What you also find is the .rmd file which is the red metadata file which contains all your metadata that the camera recorded let's say like what ISO you shot in and what byte balance it was, it was balanced in camera. If you make changes to your raw clips and raw settings in Final Cut Pro, let's say you adjust the white balance and ISO, it saves it in the RMD file and it is also then reflected if you edit that grade or grade that clip in Resolve then. So you need to know that it's always connected to your raw clip basically. All right, now that files are on your drive and you are absolutely pumped and ready to edit, so you wanna make sure that your computer and your programs are also able to edit red raw files. So definitely make sure that your NLEs and grading software is up to date and all drivers are installed. You can use Red Cinex Pro to view, manage and edit your raw video files. It's both available on Windows and Mac and I will leave the link to red.com's download page in the description below. And if you're editing in Final Cut Pro like I do, you have to download the Apple Workflow plugin from Red. I will also link this in the description below and then also Final Cut Pro in its latest version can replay these beautiful red raw clips. Premiere Pro and Resolve just need to be fully up to date and then you have no problem importing your files and you're ready to go and have fun editing. I first thought that I actually need to create proxies from the R3Ds because these file sizes are so big, but due to its fairly low compression, my computer actually plays it back smoothly so there's no need for me to create any proxies. So that's dope. Alright, so last but definitely not least, let's talk about the very, very basics of color grading. And quick disclaimer, I'm not a colorist whatsoever. So this is just the workflow that worked for me and hopefully it's a little bit informative. And it all starts with IPP2, the words IPP2. In 2017, Red completely overhauled their image processing pipeline and introduced IPP2 a standardized and simplified workflow that also had visual enhancement and tones and colors. To follow IPP2, you just have to set your color space to red, white, gamut, RGB and your gamma curve to red lock 3G10. When it comes to color grading, I follow a three-step process and for each step, basically, I have an adjustment layer. In terms of resolve, it would be a node. The top layer is where I start out and the top layer actually is the last adjustment that happens as the system is processing it. In that top layer, I start with a Rec 709 conversion from RED and you can download these RED IPP2 conversions to Rec 709 on their website as well. Again, link in the description below. Within that Rec 709 conversion, you can pick between different levels of contrast and highlight roll off. I generally pick medium or high contrast depending on the lighting situation, but almost every time a very soft highlight roll off. I pick low contrast or no contrast in very low light situations, but you will get a feel for it, what works best for you and the image you want to achieve. And from there, in your second adjustment layer, you want to make sure that you are color correcting basically all your images so that they are looking alike. You know, in this case, I can just add a little bit of a, an S curve just to add a little bit more contrast and, and pull down the midtones just a tad. And on the other side, at this stage, I also manipulate the red raw data. In Final Cut Pro, you, it just opens up this little modify red raw settings under the info box here. And then you can just adjust your ISO and adjust your color balance depending on the look you want to achieve and just apply it. Again, this saves it in the RMD file. And then at the very bottom, you can add a look LUT. And let's pick here one from Tryon Film. I Let's take Dark Knight because it was shot in Chicago and boom, you see it creates a look and um, that's it. That's very much a very simplified, quick, quick, quick overview of how I approach my grading of red footage. And you can easily adopt this approach for Premiere Pro and DaVinci Resolve as well. But let's go outside one more time. 
So this wraps our introductionary overview of these seven things that you want to know as a proud new red owner as you get started. Please let me know down in the comments below if it was helpful. Also, if you have any other questions, I want to make more deep dives for you. Definitely the highly requested color grading tutorial, but I will wait for this one once the weather is constantly miserable and I have to sit inside anyways. In the meantime, if you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button and if you want to join our little community here and tag along this ride, please consider hitting that subscribe button and the notification bell. And you find me also on Instagram if you want to see some BTS and stuff that I'm doing and producing at the moment. And as always, thanks so much for watching. Have a good morning, have a good night, wherever and whenever you are around this beautiful planet. Thank you, bye bye. As many are getting their hands on a red camera for the very first time, let's talk about these seven things that you need to know as a proud new red owner. All the image program blood. I was in your shoes just six months ago. No, two months ago. Fucking hell. With the release of the brand new red so blood.